Good morning, we're back in Perth, Australia. It's Friday the 10th of May and 8.30 a.m. and we're waiting for the bus to go to the hospital for my third oncologist appointment. It's been, we're just sitting there, it's been eight and a half months since surgery, since this single mastectomy. And this is, I think, basically a checkup to see how I'm going with tamoxifen, like the hormone treatment. And yeah, seeing things, how things are going. Things are going quite well, aren't they, actually? They are. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see the oncologist and see what they have to say. We hope this finds you all well. Enjoy the video. It's a Mitchell Freeway and the city of Perth in the distance. That was a wonderfully easy trip to the to the hospital. Oh my word. Well and truly less than an hour and we are about an hour early, I think, like we always are, and fashionably early. Yes, and so because we thought we'd be in a rush this morning, we've actually brought our breakfast. Yeah, we've made up the oats, our typical like travel breakfast in my travel container. We can help ourselves, no. yeah. We'll find a bench, sit down somewhere leisurely and have something to eat and then arrive nice and calm. That's the yes. way to do it. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So there we go, that room just up there. That's where I spent the two nights and was feeling more sick than I've ever felt before, but yay! Back here, it's a Charles Gardner. This is so lovely. Um, we've got our very healthy, like oats and soy milk and seeds and nuts and frozen berries that I made up last night and left in the fridge. And we're having it here in the Solaris Community Garden. Solaris is uh, for the cancer patients, isn't yes. it, Mandy? Yeah, it's a nice little cafe and they have things going on and we can sit here, have some breakfast. Very pleasant. So how did the appointment go, Mandy? Uh, it wasn't quite what I expected and the big problem is that Lee and I have just been talking about like what was actually said in the appointment and we can't remember a lot of it. So my recommendation to you is when you have an appointment, like record it, you know, not, not for you, we didn't record it. And even if we had, a, we wouldn't have shared it with you, but just to jog our own memories because you're talking so fast and I know people say take notes, it's going too fast to take notes, you know. So from what we can remember, um, I asked how often I should be having appointments and I think she said between 6 to 12 months but I asked also when I was going to be coming off tamoxifen and she had a look at my records and said um, yes I'm definitely in postmenopause and because the last time I had a period was last June um, and it's now May this should be the last month of being on tamoxifen and then I should switch to an aromatase inhibitor and I was like yeah, yeah that's cool you know prescription please and she said to do that, I need to have a, I think it was a BMT. It's like a, a body bone scan. Bone scan. Yeah. yeah. And to ascertain like how strong my bones are, because I think with aromatase inhibitors, they can cause osteoporosis. So in advance, they have to make sure that my bones are nice and strong. The only thing is, we're leaving the country in two and a half weeks. So because she said like yeah you've got to come back in a month and I was like well I'm not actually going to be here I'll be back in August so I can do it all then um, so basically she's making a so give yourself time as well that's what I've learned for the future but yeah I'm going to be back in August so things can be done then um, so what I need the next stage is I need to have a um, the scan and then they'll call me with the results and they'll tell me if I'm okay to go on to the aromatase inhibitor. I'll put the name up because I can't remember which one it is. It's not Lintrazole, it's one of the other ones. And then... Um, if the bone scan is yes, not if, good. If, yeah, if the bone scan's not good, then I will need to have injections every three months to like strengthen the bones. Um, and that's also, I think she said, if the hot flushes were bad, if the, the menopausal signs were really bad, then I'd also need the injections. Or I've got another drug for that. I'll put the name up above as well. That's what I mean, like I wish we'd recorded this because it was so much information in a very short space of time because the waiting room was very full. So, yeah. so it's not as straightforward as we thought it would No, be, we right? thought it was going to be so easy, like yeah, just swap over, here's your new script. No. Um, so, 
Um, the great thing is, if I can't get the scan done in time before we fly out, um, then I do actually have enough scripts for tamoxifen. So I can continue with the tamoxifen. She just said the benefit of swapping to the aromatase inhibitor is that it's, it's actually proves, proven more effective in um, keeping away estrogen from, the, from any like, possible cancer growth. I asked her about HRT, because that's been talked about a lot lately for um, menopausal things, and she said like, no, 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 no. Because the reason I'm taking, we'll be taking the aromatase inhibitors is to prevent the estrogen, which is the, the tumor was estrogen plus, plus, plus. Super strong estrogen, so I've got to steer clear of that. Which is why I'd need the injections to strengthen the bones. It just goes round and round and round. But anyway, um, so it's not quite the definitive answer that I was hoping for to like give you all. I will update it when I receive more news. I just remembered something else. Uh, we were talking about like the results of my blood tests and all this sort of stuff and I asked her like how long in theory I would be on medication for, like if it would be five years, like you know one year of tamoxifen and then four years of aromatase inhibitors and she said well it, it all depends and you know the very fact that before that I didn't need chemo as such there was my choice because it was such a gray area and it wasn't really of much benefit to me she said if I'd been younger if I'd been like mid 30s it would have been strongly recommended that I have chemo because my KI67 is 33% which was quite high it means like it's a it's a faster growing like I don't know stronger tumor or something like that but um so she said because of the KI67 score being 33% there is a good chance that I will need to be on um, hormone treatment for 10 years, 7 to 10 years. Often it's only 5 years but in my case it'll probably be for longer. Hopefully this is the last thing. I asked the registrar if there was anything that I should be like eating or avoid eating like food wise etc and she said no just eat what you like they don't recommend anything. Like, so, you know, it's, yeah. My change in diet has, has come from other things that I've read. It's not from anything that the medical profession have advised me to do. And also, I asked her about my scar, because I, I love my scar. If you ever see me in the street, just say, Mandy, can you please show me your scar? And I will, because I'm, so, I'm so proud of it. Actually, I haven't done it for a while. Lee? There you go, look at that, look work at of art. that, it Fantastic. is. It is so, so, so beautiful. And so I, I asked her, so are most scars like this? Is this normal? Is this typical? And she said, uh, it's a very neat scar. Like, I obviously heal well from, um, from surgery, etc. And I told her about going vegan 24 days before the surgery. Because I, I, I still genuinely think that played a huge part in reducing the inflammation. And so that's why now I'm going to be focusing for the next two weeks until I get the appointment for the bone scan. I'm going to be willing my bones stronger and denser. And I'm going to be working on that. I'll be doing hypnotherapy with Marissa Peer and all will be well. Okay, this is something completely new. I've never seen adverts like this before in the bus stops. Time for another update. It's Wednesday the 22nd of May. Now, um, the last time I recorded anything was after I went to the oncologist and that was all a bit weird um i kind of wish i'd done an update last week because last week i went on a bit of a downer um which is kind of why i didn't record anything but the you know the discussion with the oncologist wasn't what i expected and then i was worried about like the bone density scan and having to take an injection every three months and i sort of went spiraling down a little bit so it's just really important i think when you find yourself doing that just try to take steps to pull yourself out of it because things can and will always get better so last week wasn't great but this week's been really cool like I just feel so much more I don't know inspired and energetic etc went and saw the GP and I had the suspicious mole burnt off it's been sent away for a biopsy I get the results on Monday which is actually the day that we're flying out to our exciting new destination um, you know I'll tell you more about that later on or in another video um, and what else I've made an appointment for the bone density scan, that's tomorrow at the hospital. Then I'll have a tele appointment on Friday. Like it's all go. It's been like a, such an action packed three weeks back in Perth. Like I love it here, it's so cool spending time with family as well. And I've been eating really well. Um, I haven't been making the smoothies. I've been like for breakfast now, it's more like the rolled oats. And I've started adding like Greek yogurt, a little bit of that as well, just to help build up the calcium and the 
protein, because that's one of the things the oncologist said. She recommended that I start taking vitamin D and K tablets with calcium, just to make sure that my bones are nice and strong. So I've, I've embarked on that. I'm in my sister's hammock. She made a brilliant song about it. Like um, I shared it on our Instagram. Life is much better in a hammock. And I do completely agree. Now to get myself fit and healthy and strong, I've like, first of all, been listening to a lot of Louise Hay affirmations. I love Louise Hay. I can't believe I missed her through like, you know, 80s, 90s and early 2000s. Like, but things come to you when you need them. And for me, it's Louise Hay affirmations. She's absolutely brilliant. And so listen to a lot of them and to soft video frequencies. And they really like help pull me out of the funk and get me motivated. And sorry, it's really, can you see the plane? Not normally that low, not normally that close. Anyway, so um, where was I? So video frequencies, absolutely brilliant, working on, on things there. And so I went to see an exercise physiologist because, you know, sometimes you just have to, I don't know, how do you put this? Yeah, you can't just rely on doctors and hospitals and the specialists to tell you what, what to do and to get you into the best possible shape. Sometimes you like you really have to do it for yourself. So I went to an exercise physiologist, and he's he was absolutely brilliant. He's given me some excellent exercises to help like build up the bone density, the mineral, whatever it is, to make your bones stronger. I'll show you like some of them in a video. But you know, today was the first day that I did the whole lot and um, started off okay. And then it's like, oh my word, <laughs> I'm really sore, aching. But I need them three times a week because you have to give your your bones and muscles a chance to like. Um, I don't know, recuperate and then build up and get stronger. A few things I still need to do. I need to book travel insurance. I need to look at when I'm going to book a flight back from our like next destination, like back to Perth. And then my sister and I are thinking about going on a trip together to Thailand like later in the year. So that'll be so cool. She's never been. And like, I love Thailand. If you've seen our, our recent Thailand playlist, Lee and I spent three weeks eating. Oh, it was just my favourite food, favourite food in the world. It's actually cool. Um, yeah, so I've got things to do, but I just wanted to like give you like a bit of an update and then I'll let you know again how the results go from the bone density scan tomorrow, the telephone call Friday, and the chat with the GP to find out about this mole thing. And then we're flying Monday afternoon and I'm not too sure if I'm going to tell you now or tell you later what our plans are, but they're pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. And the next time you see me, I'll have shorter hair. So, from my sister's hammock, because remember, life is much better in a hammock. I'll talk to you next time. So, good morning. It's Thursday, the 23rd of May, I think. Yep, and we are at Charles Gardner Hospital at the Bone Density Scan Place. Yeah, it's C Block. This is a new block for us. It's quite interesting. And I have had my bone density scan. I've had the interim result. I'm not too sure exactly what it's going to mean as yet. Get, I have the telephone appointment tomorrow with the oncologist. Mm. But um, they gave me this incredibly interesting information um, to yeah. get on the fridge about calcium content of foods that Mandy can eat to supplement calcium. Yeah. And there's some really good information there, isn't there? Well, yeah. Talk them through it, Lee. Well, one of the things I really noticed was that a tin of sardines. Uh, you need a thousand milligram of calcium every day. A tin of sardines contains 872, whereas an egg contains 16. So wow. you need, oh, so there's a purple cat, yeah. never mind. So you need 54 eggs for one <laughs> tin of sardines, the equivalent of. And uh, skim milk, there's more calcium than full fat milk. I wouldn't have known that. No. So interesting. Yeah, so what else? Mm, anything else good for me? Or what, uh, what's tofu. soy milk? Tofu, tofu, you get 208 milligrams in um, a block of tofu. That's <gasps> really good. That is excellent. Yep. So it's just the fact that your yeah, daily intake for calcium thousand milligrams a day i think i'm gonna to have to really up the calcium intake yeah so if mandy goes onto these aromatase inhibitors uh it means that they can reduce the um calcium in your blood yeah the, um, in your bones it can lead so, to osteoporosis yeah so hopefully the scan the results of this scan will mean that mandy doesn't need to have injections with those yeah but from like we did open the envelope and we did have a look at the interim report and i'm just below the line yeah just below the so line we're not sure so... we think you might get that information yeah. tomorrow we'll report back <laughs> and see what happens 
as it's such a beautiful day and we started really early we've come down to Elizabeth Quay in Perth so beautiful down here you've got the waterfront just in front of us really pretty we've got a picnic bench here and a bit of sunshine so we're nice and warm having our breakfast Mandy good breakfast yes delicious we've eaten most of it as you can <laughs> see at the back yeah. door. but what we've got left is like oats and raw cacao and frozen berries and almonds and walnuts and sunflower seeds and yeah. chia seeds and pumpkin seeds so healthy we're gonna sit here and enjoy a nice healthy cheap breakfast uh, enjoying the scenery and this beautiful beautiful Perth day we might you know, go for a walk around town go to the library just enjoy life in Perth so until next time like until I give you an update like huge love from me to you